Myths are not stories that are untrue. Rather, they are tales that don't fit neatly into the historical record, which serve as a foundation to a culture. It is a hot, humid Vietnamese summer. The air so thick, you can practically swim through it. Dark clouds gather on the horizon, sweeping down the mountains and bringing torrential rains and rising sea levels, threatening farms and houses. However, this is not unexpected. Everyone is prepared for the oncoming hardship, and the names of those responsible are on everyone's lips. For the story of this seasonal occurrence goes back 5,000 years. Long ago, there lived a great king and his very talented daughter, Min Wong. She was a musician, an intelligent student, and an avid athlete, always hiking the mountains and swimming in the oceans with ease. And with such a special daughter, when she came of age and it was time for her to marry, the king was determined to find her someone equally as extraordinary. So he decided to hold a contest at his palace to find her the perfect guy. Couriers went out across the land bearing a single message. Anyone who could prove their worthiness would be given Min Huang's hand in marriage. Upon hearing this news, the people were overjoyed at this chance to join the royal family. And from every corner of the kingdom, hopeful bachelors poured forth for a shot at royalty and an awesome wife. When the day of the contest came, the palace was packed. There were princes, diplomats, and warriors. Renowned authors wrote beautiful poems. Famous musicians played their hearts out. And gifted artists presented their life's work before the king. Even wealthy businessmen brought gold and bragged of their accomplishments. But out of those extraordinary individuals, two stood above the rest. Quite literally, actually. For they were Sun Tin the Mountain God and Tui Tin, Lord of the Waters. Now, why would a god be interested in marrying a mortal, you might ask? Well, you see, it's because both of them had seen Min Wong quite a bit before. Sun Tin had spotted her hiking and heard her singing in his mountains and fell in love with her strength and talent. And Tui Tin had noticed her swimming in his waters and reading on his beaches, and was equally captivated by her grace and intelligence. Now, not being one to want to disappoint deities, the king invited both of them to show off what they could do and prove their worthiness of his cherished daughter. Wasting no time, the mountain god stepped forward first and addressed the crowd. I am Sun Tin, ruler of the mountains. All of the creatures of the land are under my domain. I desire to marry Min Wong and promise to bring her happiness, love, and eternal life. With this, he raised his mighty fist into the air, and massive trees sprouted from the ground, creating a lush, dense forest. Then with the whisper of a magic word, the ground cracked and shook as mountains sprung from the earth. It was very impressive. The king and princess were both intrigued. However, Tui Tin also had mighty powers to display. Stepping forward, he introduced himself as well. My name is Tui Tin, and I'm the spirit of the seas. I reign over all of the ocean's creatures and control rains and storms. If the princess and I will wed, I can promise her the most magnificent undersea palace in a beautiful magical realm. And with a fluid wave of his hand, great winds began to blow, which shook and even knocked over some of Sun Tin's trees. He then shouted a magic word into the furious air, and the seas started to rise. But when the waves fell, there were bountiful fish for all to enjoy. After both of these magnificent displays, the king definitely knew that one of these two was the one to marry his beloved Min Huang. Hmm, but which one? Both were extraordinary, powerful, and intelligent. They were both so equal in ability and appeal, it was impossible to choose between the two. So the king declared that there would be one final challenge. The first of them to arrive the next day, with appropriate wedding gifts, would have his permission to marry Min Huang. With that, the suitors left the court and rushed back to their kingdoms to prepare, both working on their presentations long into the night. Then the next day, as the sun rose, the king and Min Huang looked out anxiously to see who would arrive first. And after a few moments on the horizon, they saw a grand procession approaching. It was Sun Tin, along with 100 attendants, each of them carrying trays of jewels, baskets of fruit, and colorful flowers. Min Wang was delighted by the beautiful gifts, while the king was happy to see just how prosperous Sun Tin was, and how dedicated he would be to his beloved daughter. In fact, they were so impressed that the king just married them right there at once. 
Then Minhuang packed up her things, and the newlyweds set off in a jeweled palanquin to their new home in the mountains. Not long after they left, Tui Tin arrived, marching to the palace with his men carrying pearls and baskets full of seafood. He posed triumphantly and declared that he was here to claim Minhuang as his wife. But his smile faded when he saw the courtyard was empty. Huh, had he gotten the date wrong or something? After a moment, an attendant appeared to tell him that Sun Tin had already come and taken Minhuang away. Tui Tin stood, his heart shattered, and shed a single salty tear. Then, in a fury, he ordered his men to drop the gifts and pursue the palakine to steal Minhuang away from Sun Tin and bring her to the ocean. As his human subjects dashed off, Tui Tin drew his magic sword, and all of the creatures of the sea transformed into thousands and thousands of soldiers. And he summoned heavy rains and great winds that raised the sea higher and higher until the flood washed away entire forests and villages. Meanwhile, none the wiser, Sun Tin and Min Huang were enjoying their honeymoon trip to the mountains, when all of a sudden, the palakine was swept up in a great wave and they were surrounded by Tui Tin's soldiers. Sun Tin leapt forward to protect his wife and return the magical favor, transforming the animals and birds of the mountains into thousands of his own soldiers to fight back against Tui Tin's forces. The two gods battled for days, with every time Tui Tin raising the waters and Sun Tin raising the mountains even higher. They were truly at a standstill. All the while, countless human lives and livelihoods were lost in the crossfire. And eventually, when it was clear that he could not win, Tui Tin withdrew his men and returned to the ocean, and a beleaguered Sun Tin and Min Wong finally retired to their new mountain home. But while Tui Tin may have lost the battle, he wasn't ready to give up the war. So throughout the ages, the mountain god and the lord of the waters have continued to battle each other, each year Tui Tin summoning his storms and raising the water to the mountaintops to pursue his love, and each year Sun Tin fights back and wins the battle though not before many homes and crops are destroyed in the Divine Crossfire. We mere mortals call that time of year monsoon season, but we lovers of mythology know that underneath the storms and fury, a broken heart is to blame. I don't want to brag, but Ahmed, Ziad, Turk, Alicia, Bramble, Casey, Muscha, Dominic Valenciana, Gunnar Clovis, Kyle Murgatroyd, and O'Reels One are fantastic legendary patrons. 